But it is um, interesting where our world's going. You know, I foresee a time in the not too distant future where there's very um, liberal states that might penalize us for using grid power. Well, what's up guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and uh, we're gonna do something a little bit different today. I've got a video that I'm really excited about, a product that I'm really excited about from our friends over at Blue Eddy. Now, a lot of you have probably heard of Blue Eddy for their portable solar generators, you know, that you can plug something into and have power wherever you need it on the go. Well, think along those lines, except on a massive scale. Um, a lot of folks have um, emergency backup generators behind their house, you know, the, the big generators that just sit there all the time and when the power goes off, the generator fires up, it's propane or gasoline powered. Think along those lines, except full electric, battery backup, never lose power, emergency situations, off-grid situations. Say uh, we live way out in the country and we have power flashes all the time. You know, a tree that falls on a power line five miles from here and you lose power for eight hours. That can be devastating when you have a thousand pounds of beef in a freezer. So I haven't even taken any of this out of the box yet, but let me introduce you to the Blue Eddy EP900. So as you can see, there's actually three boxes. So the EP900 is not just one little battery bank. This is a massive, huge system. Okay, so technically this is the Blue Eddy EP900 and two uh, Blue Eddy B500 expandable batteries. But this entire system is what we're gonna use. We're not using it off-grid. We're not, we have no intentions of being off-grid, but this could be a very reliable off-grid system paired with some solar panels on your roof or whatever. Uh, we're not in the, you know, going at this to be off-grid, but maybe someday, even just if it was just the shop, my shop here, pulls quite a bit of electricity because we've got all of our lights, you know, heat lamps for animals. It does have central heat and air. I like to keep the humidity as low as I can in the shop. Like right now it's blistering high humidity. So it's not the heat, it's the humidity. And I do have the door open and the air's off, but technically when you shut that door, pull the humidity out, it's a much better space to work in. And uh, the system is really gonna help bring down those power bills. Now, I'm not an electrician and don't claim to be, but everything with the Blue Eddy EP900 system is plug and play. They send you all the connectors and everything to basically plug and play. Everything just connects, you know, from the EP900 to the batteries. But I do have an electrician on the way. We're gonna do a professional install because while this is plug and play, this is a, a basically a whole home, whole shop backup generator system. And if you lose power, it'll switch over instantly to their power. And I wanna make sure everything's set up to handle that switch. So, you know, like a, I'm gonna have an electrician come in and wire everything up from the breaker box to this to make sure it's done right. Now my original plan had nothing to do with installing these here. I was really kind of hoping to get them over in DJ's new merchandise warehouse and put the solar panels up on the roof and not necessarily be completely off grid there, but have the ability to run completely off grid and still be tied in. But right now the merch facility is not anywhere near completed. And the great thing about this modular plug and play system is we can set everything up in here. I just got off the phone with the electrician. They're going to be your first thing in the morning to install a, uh, cut off switch, another box basically over here to wire this into so that if we lose power, a relay switch trips and turns this guy on and powers the shop and the freezers and all that stuff. But the plan was to put it in the merchandise facility and right now we're still just in the foundation phases of that. 
Folks, we are hooked up, installed, and ready to go. But maybe I should have said installed, hooked up, and ready to go. Um, it took a little bit more work on the professional electrician side than I guess what I expected going into it. And I, I didn't really know what we were getting with this Blue Eddy system. And listen, there are so many different uses for this thing, so many different ways you can use this system. Right now, it is installed in our shop just for me to test out and learn and figure everything out. But basically this is nothing more right now than just a emergency backup. Think about it as your gasoline generator, like a Generac generator that's sitting out behind your house. But there's so many more things you, that this thing is capable of. But right now that's how we're hooked up. Um, they've got a transfer switch wired in. So basically everything here, this charges on grid power. This is wired into the grid. Now, basically all that means is if we have a power outage, I have to come out here, flip a breaker, and we're on uninterrupted backup power. So if we lose power, power goes out for seven, eight hours. All I have to do is come out here, not seven or eight hours later, as soon as we lose power, come out here, flip a breaker, and we're good to go. It can be installed with an automatic transfer switch so that the instant power goes out, it's like within a tenth of a second, the blue 80 kicks in. You really don't even know that you lost power. We just have a manual transfer switch because the upgrade to the automatic transfer switch was about an extra $2,000. And I've got $2,500 right now in installation through the uh, electricians, but it is an interesting system. So let me, tell you, let me tell you about what all this amazing blue eddy system will do. Now let me pause to say this. The EP900 can be set up as an uninterrupted power supply, meaning when the lights go out, the lights stay on, basically. Guaranteed UPS for unexpected blackouts. But that takes that automatic transfer switch and I just have a manual transfer switch to go from the manual to the automatic was about $2,000 more. And not to mention we have this interlock device, which means I can't turn both of these breakers on at the same time. So this is my main power coming in. This is the EP900 wired into to feed the whole system. Now, automatic transfer switch, it could be done. It could be set up. It is a little bit more expensive and it would not work with this interlock device. So first off, the whole EP900 and the two B500 uh, batteries, it's all a modular system. It's plug and play. You can, once you buy the EP900, you can buy as many of the uh, B500 batteries as you need. These each are 4,960 watt hours. So the, the, the EP900 itself has a maximum rating of 9,000 watts. But with those two, you're at another 9,000 watt hours, basically. Listen, I'm not an electrician. I don't know techs and tech and specs very well, but this is interesting to me. I, I'm wanting to learn more. I have no plans on being off grid, but, but with a system like this, you could be partially off grid. Think about this. So I've got my main breaker panel here and it comes in from the grid. What you could do and what I'm thinking about doing on DJ's merchandise warehouse facility is setting a panel next to it and putting all your non-essential loads on it and then wiring it into the Blue Eddy system. So you'd have your on-grid power as your main source. 
your Blue Eddy system that you can charge through the grid. So basically, I don't know, most of you guys are probably familiar, but power companies charge a premium during high usage hours. So from like 1 p.m., 2 p.m., down to like 7 p.m., something like that. Electricity costs you more because that's when we're all doing stuff. But you can store electricity and charge these at night. Blue Eddy has uh, their app. I can go in and set all the timers and everything and tell this thing to charge at night on grid power. And then during the day, it could feed that second panel on all the non-essential loads and we wouldn't be running on as expensive of power. But this thing can be wired in with solar power. So if you're wanting to be on grid, you can do it. If you're wanting to be off grid, you can be completely off grid with this on solar power or that middle range. I think there's a big market there for a lot of people of partially off grid. Now bear with me. So your main panel, you got your second breaker with your non-essential loads. You put solar panels on the roof of your house, your barn, your shop, whatever, in your yard. And the solar panels charge the EP900. But you're running all those non-essential loads through the EP900. So all of your lights, your refrigerators, your fans, all that kind of stuff could be ran on your solar. And then the big stuff like your central heat and air unit, if you've got an electric hot water heater, water heater, a lot of power you know your your big stuff you can still run on the grid and that would dramatically reduce your electric bills and i think that's what i want to do like i said at dj's merchandise facility and that could be easily done on a new install for sure so this modular stackable design can be installed indoors or outdoors i have it inside my shop but you could actually put this outside and put it in just like a uh, some small cabinet or something you know a metal cabinet and it doesn't hang on the wall. There's no weight supported on that wall or anything like that. It supports itself. So the whole Blue Eddy system is controlled through their app. There's no actual screen on here, everything. Everything is very neat and tidy and tucked away. It's all kind of plug and play, I guess you'd say, other than your professional installation side on, on your end for your service. But it's all ran through their app and I just downloaded the app on the iPad so you guys can see it a little better than just on the phone. But Here's our Blue Eddy app. We're all connected. It's not charging right now. There's nothing going through this system. So basically, it's just sitting here, electricity and storage. Think about it like that. I'm just storing electricity for when I need it, whether it be during those peak hours or during a blackout, you know, if we lose power for two or three hours, anything. When you live in the country like I do and you have power lines, I don't know if you can even see, but there is a electric pole and all of my lines coming in here and all those trees, it's easy for one tree to fall and knock out your power. So why don't we switch off of grid power and go to our emergency backup? So I'm gonna flip one breaker, all the lights went off in the shop, all the power's off on everything in here. I'm gonna flip a breaker and you'll see we should start pulling power through. Yep, everything's kicking in through the EP900. So right now we're 100% running on off-grid power, even though the, I know the EP, uh, the Blue Eddy EP900 was charged through grid power, but we're simulating a power outage right now. Let's go around and see what all we have plugged in, because right now we're pulling 1,000 uh, 1,500 watts, 1,600, 1,500 watts. So it's running all the lights in the shop. It's running that light. Um, I've got a heat lamp plugged in over here. Battery charger for the boat. I've got an extra battery being charged there. And this is just for demonstration purposes. Obviously you wouldn't run all this stuff during a power outage necessarily, but you know, on a farm, sometimes you have multiple incubators going and we know those have to stay powered. I'm also running a Harvest Right freeze dryer. There's nothing in it. This is like I said, for demonstration purposes only. So the Harvest Right is running. And what I'm gonna do is turn on the shop vac and turn on, it's not plugged in yet. Let's plug this in into a 220 outlet. So you can run 120 volt stuff, you know, your typical 120 volts or 220 volt. So let's turn on, this is a MIG welder running on 220. Let's see what much power we're using right now. Right now we're pulling 3,400 watts. This 
we're at 98% charge, so it's running everything plus what we need in here. I'm gonna turn this noisy thing off. That's probably what's using the most power right there is that vacuum, so it'll, you'll watch it drop 3,400 watts down to 2,000 watts. So it just came out to the shop. It's about 8.30 in the evening. If you listen closely, you can hear it's raining. So we're gonna test this system and just see, we're fully charged right now. It's not storming. We're not having any severe, you know, tornado threats or anything. But let's say we had this storm come through, knocks the power out. How long could this EP900 system from Blue Eddy power my shop? You know, would it work? Would it run everything overnight? We're gonna leave the lights on, refrigerator, heat lamp for Houston's turtles and everything. And uh, right now we're at 99%. So we're gonna flip the breaker off for the grid power and flip the breaker on that runs the EP900 and let this thing power the shop. So we're gonna flip the breaker off. It's gonna go dark in here, kill all the lights. So grid power is off. And now we're 100% on the Blue Eddy EP900 total battery power. So right now, according to the Blue Eddy app here, everything's running through the EP900 and we're pulling 900, oh, low battery, 930 watts. So that's with all the lights on, the refrigerator, the freezer, a couple batteries, uh, DeWalt batteries charging, a um, heat lamp for Houston's Turtles. So we'll see how it does tonight. So quick update, it is 9.45, so it's almost 10 p.m. and we are at 85% battery. Oh, we're at 85% battery remaining. So we're not gonna make it all night with all the lights on. So I figured, well, let's leave it, you know, realistically, if it was a power outage situation, you're gonna want your lights and stuff on if this is in your house. And, um, you know, about bedtime, you'll turn the lights off so you'll conserve some energy. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off our main lights in here. There's one light left on over there above that. And uh, that should drop our power usage down quite a bit. Yeah, we're down to, um, 592 watts. So we went from 1100 watts down to 500. So that'll, uh, you know, we'll leave uh, probably one light on in here. Refrigerators, everything will be on all night. And uh, we'll go to bed. Oh, you hear it flicker or see it flicker just a little bit. The, the, the uh, system is running right now. You can hear the little fans in it and everything. It's actually really quiet. It's no generator by any means, um, but we're gonna go to bed and see where this is in the morning. 7 a.m. the next morning and the, the Blue 80 is still going strong. You know, it can run for a long time when it's only pulling four to 500 watts. So I turned on the lights, so we're back up to pulling, you know, 1100 watts, but we are at 37%. I think I'll just uh, probably turn the lights off and keep the test going. And we'll see where it's at when DJ and I get back from the gym later this morning. Well, it's now 11 a.m. And let's check in and see where the Blue Eddy is on battery power. Everything's still on and working just fine. 17% battery. Not bad considering we turned this thing on at 8.30 last night. So as you can see, this system will pull a lot of things. Uh, pretty much anything you needed, household-wise, small appliances, all that stuff. Like I said, maybe for the, ex except your central heat and air unit, um, you know, if you had enough batteries, it's gonna run a lot of stuff for a long time. Now, obviously, like I said, we're running on grid. This is just backup power um, for us, emergency backup power right now, but I wanna test it out. I, I think there's some other possibilities out there. And like that partially off grid setup, um, you know, if you had solar panels on your roof, you could trickle charge these things constantly and not pull power from the grid. You know, there's just a lot of different things you can do, but you don't necessarily have to have any special solar panels. It'll, if you have solar panels on your roof, it's, it will work with existing solar panel setups or new setups or temporary, whatever you've got, it just, put solar power into it, it's gonna charge it. So, so the Blue Eddy's pretty rugged and tough. It's got a big aluminum housing on the outside. If you bump into it, you're not gonna damage it. They're lithium iron phosphate batteries, uh, really safe, dependable. And with Blue Eddy's system, with this, you're gonna get a 10 year 
warranty on it. So if it, anything goes wrong, they're there to back you up. So one thing that really does pique my interest is this lowering your utility bills concept. If you had a small solar setup and you could partially charge this thing on solar and partially charge it with grid power late at night because the, the Blue Eddy app lets you set timers. You can go in, set it up, tell it to charge you know, between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. or whatever. Then you can use that power during the peak hours on those non-essential circuits and things. That, that does interest me 100%. So I say all of this, but I also wanna tell you guys, listen, I don't think this right here as a backup system is perfect for everyone. I think that uh, off-grid, partially off-grid, supplemental power, if you had a big enough you know, solar system on your house, you can technically, you know, if you have excess power, sell it back to the power company to reduce your bills and all of that. Right now, this is set up 100% tied into the grid and just for backup purposes. But I can't wait to experiment with some other stuff with it. Because just as backup power, you know, in rural Oklahoma, I can come out here, buy a $400 generator. If we lose power, flip the main breaker off, plug into that 220 volt outlet, start the generator and have power in here for $500. But not everyone lives in a rural area. And I understand that. Some people may live in a, in a townhouse where a gasoline generator is prohibited. And this may be their only backup power. You know, there's places that lose power for four, five, six hours on a regular basis. It's a little bitty community by me called Darty, Oklahoma, seven miles from where I'm at. And everybody there complains all the time because they lose power multiple times a week for several hours. That, when you have freezers full of meat, just doesn't work. So this system, if it would, you know, power their, pretty much all of their things they need, their refrigerator, their freezers and all of that stuff, four, five, six times, or for four, five, six hours, two or three times a week, that might be a great investment. Now, I know this video is a little bit different for me and my channel, and, and I just wanna say a huge thank you to Blue Eddy for sponsoring this video, but it is um, interesting where our world's going. You know, I foresee a time in the not too distant future where there's very um, liberal states that might penalize us for using grid power and if you have solar panels or wind turbines or whatever for alternate power sources, you may get some incentives and in re you know, reduced cost on your utility bills and stuff. Obviously, they're going to be reduced costs if you're producing your own power. But not all of us are necessarily worried about being off grid. But there are things we can do that uh, I think prepare us for the future and prepare us for where our country may be going. And if you can provide your own food source, that's great. You can provide your own water source, that's great. But being able to provide your own power source, that's a whole nother world. So it, it interests me and I just wanna share it with you guys. I know totally off topic today, totally not a farm video. We're not fishing or doing any of that kind of stuff. But this is like really, I don't know. It makes my brain go about nine different directions. I love the idea of being partially off grid and being able to provide my own power for a lot of the non-essential stuff and not having to pay higher electric bills. Being able to reduce utility bills is just a, a good thing all the way around. So if you're interested in learning more about the, EP, uh, the EP900 and the B500 batteries or any of the other products that Blue Eddy sells, Go check them out, blueeddypower.com. There'll be a link in the description box down below. Um, there's a ton of different options. This is probably not gonna be in everyone's budget, but there are things, there are smaller systems that are very affordable. And uh, like I said, this is, this is big, top end, top of the line stuff. And um, I'm curious to see the direction it goes in the future. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.